Hi, I'm Alison, editor of Alizilla, and today I'm talking with James Yang, a partner and Bain at Co., uh, about the world's largest shopping festival, 1111. Thanks for joining us, James. Um, great to have you with us today. And um, could you say a few words to introduce yourself to our audience, please? Absolutely. Hi, Alison. Thanks for having me. My name is James. I'm a partner at Bain & Company, where for the past decade or so, I've really focused in the retail sector, both in Greater China and the broader APAC region. I'm also one of the co-lead authors for our insights and report on 11.11 this year. In that report that you, um, you outline the recipe for success for retail executives uh, participating in shopping festivals, could you give us your top tip? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about 11.11, really it has been this resounding success story, right? Um, starting even last year's numbers when they came in, if you include the pre-sales number, it was about 840 billion RMB, and that's up 30% over 2019. So every year you think that it can't get higher, it gets better and better, yeah? And so that was what really led to us thinking about what is that new definition for 11.11 success? And what we put forth in our report this year is one that's really anchored around customer loyalty, in addition to what we have been talking about in customer acquisition. So when you start prioritizing other metrics, such as customer lifetime value, NPS, and all these things about retention, it's, that when you, it's only when you do that when you can start really building that sustainable and defensible proposition for the longer term. And we think this shift in mentality will really help you not just win in day one, i.e. the day of 11.11, but the remaining 364 days of the calendar year as well. Um, and you just have to look across the world, right? The most successful retailers and brands have always found a way to foster deep consumer loyalty and have that great uh, banner, right? And to have those um, genuine fans within your group. And that is the real way towards long-term sustainability and success beyond the undifferentiated discounting. And so what we're thinking is that really it's this watershed moment where we think that for 11.11, if you focus a little bit more of that, that will be a, a great hallmark for you and your future success over the coming years to come. As you mentioned, 11.11 was kickstarted by Alibaba. And I just wanted to focus on how um, Alibaba's um, 88 VIP membership program has really fostered loyalty. How do you think that works for retailers and brands alike? That's a great question. I mean, one of the critical things that we looked in our report this year was NPS, right? We wanted to uncover what was different about uh, loyalty and everything like that. So we asked those 3,000 consumers that we surveyed for each of the retailers that participate in 1111 today, what is the NPS score? So how much would you advocate for this for your friends and family? And um, so not surprisingly, Alibaba was one of the leaders of the pack, right? As, coming in around 30-ish percent in the NPS score. So really kind of standing out from the crowd from that perspective. And when you looked underneath that hood, what really popped out was 88 VIP. Consumers really talked about the loyalty program, how that they were able to tap into the broader Alibaba ecosystem, no matter if you look at it from um, food delivery, discounts on Ulama, premium video streaming on Youku, right? All these wonderful things that come into play beyond just a straight price discount on the festival in and of itself, that allowed them to create the separation, right? Then consumers are beginning to notice this. That's helped drive NPS. And so when you think about what really is the success behind all this, is where you link to back to your question around the retailers and the manufacturers. The brands, right? One of the things is the brand side of things is that they are able to get digital insights from Alibaba. Alibaba has continuously improved along those digital tools and it allows brands to really understand the AIPL behind the consumers, right? The awareness, the interest, the purchase, and the loyalty. So you know exactly where consumers are spiking, where people are dropping off, what do they resonate with and not resonate with. And that allows them to customize their proposition about how they communicate and what they offer to the consumers and bind them more tightly to the platform. Now, likewise, the more kind of underlying one that people don't notice as much is the manufacturers. Alibaba has done similar things with, with manufacturers and allows them to create products and create things that are more tailored to you as a consumer. So the end result of this is like a very virtuous cycle you can think of. From a consumer's perspective, they open up their app, 
They are part of the ADA VIP program. And the moment they load up the splash screen, all the products they have in the first page are things that they really love and are tailored towards them. And I think all that builds towards a longer term success and in, in the in tightness with the consumers. Thank you. Um, you talked about a poll that Bain did of consumers' willingness to participate in 11.11 this year. Could you give us a snapshot of the results there, please? Yes. Um, again, great, great numbers coming in, at least from what we see from the consumers. Um, a, a couple ones to highlight, right? The first one is Almost everybody, 95% of the consumers intend to take part in the event again uh, this year. So basically everyone's coming back. And not only are they coming back, they're also very excited. 76% of the consumers say they continue to be excited about Singles Day 2021. And I think that is really quite um, alarming, uh, well, quite surprising in a sense, right? You, we've been running this festival for a decade plus, but there's no sense of fatigue. Every year we've found a way to make this more exciting, bigger, better than before. So that is another great sign. And I think another great sign is that more than half of them, 52% of them say they're going to spend more this year than last year. So I think all things point towards a very successful direction. The one thing that I would like to say on top of that is this growth doesn't come free of charge. 80% um, of the consumers are expecting more products and deeper discounts than last year. So, and I think that ties into a little bit about what I was just talking about earlier, right? So the rules of the game and the consumers and how we've grown 11-11 uh, throughout the years really was about, um, you know, having a lot of this, uh, attracting them through prices, yeah? So, but when we think about moving into the future, what is the other way that we can get them excited about 11-11? Um, I'm curious, what other key trends do you think are emerging in e-commerce this year? Yeah, um, three things to highlight in particular. I think if you think about the the first one being around new user penetration, right? New user penetration is a key part of your growth metric, right? Your, your absolute GMV. Now, when you think about new user penetration, for most of the 11.11's lifetime and success, it was grown through tier one, tier two cities, individuals with higher disposable incomes. And that really has a little bit you know, less headroom to grow, uh, just math, because it's been growing so heavily over the past. And last year was one of the first time where we saw a really big jump and spike in lower tier cities from three, four, five, as well as from the rural areas, potentially because of a post-COVID influence as well. But this year really is another watershed moment. Based on our survey, you will see more first-time participants in 11.11 coming from tier three, four, five cities than tier one and two. So I think that is a big change, right? Uh, swinging to the other side of the fence. And I think it's going to continue for the several years to come. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, health and wellness. Last year, it was really that post COVID bounce back, huge numbers coming in for health and wellness categories, vitamins, supplements, and everything that you can name around that. That has shown continued success and carry over for this year. Uh, consumers continue to indicate that they are most likely going to spend more in these categories together with cosmetics and personal care. So that has continued. And the third I would like to say is another thing that we see is um, not, not necessarily a flight to value, but a more bifurcation. So consumers are being more specific about and exacting about what they want. Previously, you would see these overwhelming trend towards premiumization, but now that you see a little bit more people going like, no, I'm just going to stick with what is familiar or my value for money brands or my value brands, right? So a little bit more bargain hunting depending on the categories and depending on the products. So over 70% of the uh, consumers want familiar products um, and over 60% of them say they're going to be more value oriented this year. Um, to sum up, what do you think are the key takeaways that brands should, should think about in this 11.11 and for the coming year? Yeah, if I, if I haven't hammered this home enough already, I guess what we're trying to say is there is no growth strategy without loyalty strategy. I think loyalty in the scheme of things, no one would have ever said it's not important, right? If you go to uh, any retailer, any executive, everyone would say loyalty is important. But when push came to shove, I would say that where it fell in the strategic priorities of the business in China in particular, if you looked at that and ranked it in the totem pole, it was probably number three, number four, number five, because expanding footprint, expanding user base was more of like, that was the bigger lever towards growth. But now I think we're here, I think to the point where you can't really ignore it anymore. And you should put it in your priority one, or if not one A in your overall strategic list. 
And we think that retailers really should be asking themselves, how much does our approach to 1111 feed into the broader picture, right? There's so many promotions and calendars now. So it's not just about one day, it's about 365. The second one is, are we truly putting loyalty at the heart of what we do? Um, this again, lip service is easy. Loyalty is a really, really hard thing to get right. And you have to work 100% focus on this to make sure you're building progress towards this. And I think finally, the question, third question I would put forth is, are we reshaping the business to dial up the differentiation and put that we can make loyalty as the heart of what we do? Um, I think if those retailers that really take proactive measures and take this head on are the ones that are going to be um, enter into 1111 2022 with an even stronger position as well as the rest coming years to uh, go. James, thank you so much for your insights and joining us today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Allison.